My name is Commissioner Frank Avila, and this is Avila Making a Difference. And the name of our show is Stand Like a Man, the story of Duke, the Indian. It's about Lauren Duke Adala during World War II. And as my guest, I have Donna King Nikolai Czech. She's the author of the book Stand Like a Man, the story of Duke. And I also have the, um, her husband, Douglas Nikolaychek. And, and you're the grandson of Duke. Yes. Well, glad to be on our show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for inviting us. And, and you know, uh, you wrote a book, Stand Like a Man. Now, when did you first meet Laura Duke Adala? Well, Doug and I were engaged in 2004. And, and Doug is a grandson. Doug is his grandson, and, and we went to Grandpa Duke Abdullah's house for Christmas. Yes. And uh, Duke shared some of his stories growing up in South Dakota, and he was very engaging, very charming older man, and very practical, um, a real character. <laughs> and that was the first time I, I met him. No, no, when, when you first met him, did he say, I was a Marine? He did not. He did not. It say. was not something he discussed. That was in 2004. Two, 2004, um, and World War II ended in 1945. Yes. And when you were growing up, did, did he tell you anything about the Marines? Uh? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. We talked a uh, little bit about uh, his experiences. When I was uh, 10 years old, uh, I had, I, growing up in his home, I'd see his Purple Heart, mm -hmm. and it had aged with patina. And uh, I, I, was, I always admired it and, and was uh, intrigued to ask him, you know, Grandpa, what did you do yeah. during World War II? And he uh, basically, uh, kind of in a, in a quick manner of fact, uh, told me about the uh, Battle of Peleliu that he experienced, which was about three days, and he earned his Purple Heart there. And uh, since then, I thought he was, it, 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 the injuries were so severe uh, that I thought he was sent home to the States after yeah. that. So. After that discussion uh, and hearing the horrors of what he witnessed and went through and fought through, um, I didn't really make it a, uh, uh, an issue to speak yeah. about again. So we really didn't speak about it as much. So, so uh, Donna, yes. um, when and how were you prompted to write a story about Grandpa Duke's life? Well, we visited uh, Grandpa Duke regularly. Um, and in 2008, that particular Christmas, Grandpa Duke surprised us by telling us a story. He loved to tell stories. He yeah. loves to tell Story stories. Storyteller. <laughs> and he's very good at it. And he decided to tell us um, that on a recent trip to an attorney's office, um, he was going to have a land survey done on his property. And Mr. Daniels was the attorney where he um, asked, while he was sitting at his desk, he noticed Marine memorabilia on the wall behind him, and he asked him if he had served in the Marines. And Captain Daniels explained that he was retired, and then in turn asked Grandpa Duke, did you serve in the Marines? And Grandpa Duke, it was like a floodgate opening <laughs> up. He hadn't talked or spoken of his service in World War II in years, and I believe that since this was a fellow Marine, he felt comfortable enough to open up to him and um, tell him stories that he hadn't shared with anyone. Mm. It, I think it was therapeutic for therapeutic him. Therapeutic for him because Absolutely. he met this attorney that was, because they say once a Marine, always, always a Marine. Marine. Yep. Right? And, and that's why we played the Marine song, Marine right. Hymn. Oh, absolutely. They are a band of brothers. And, and <laughs> when they play that song, every Marine stands up. Yeah. If they're sitting down and they play a, that Marine hymn, the custom is that you stand up. Absolutely. There. Well, I've got a, <laughs> the, the Christmas that um, Grandpa Duke decided to tell us this story yeah. was a bit new to us because when we arrived at his home and Doug pressed the doorbell at the top deck entrance where we entered, and this is a home that he built, yeah. by the way, um, when you press the doorbell, the Marine's hymn plays. <laughs> and... Uh, it's the first thing that hits you when you come to his door. <laughs> so he loves that. So, so Donna, how did you begin the process then of writing the book? 
You know, to write a book takes time. Well, I'll tell you, um, I had written some short stories, prose and poetry when I was a young girl. Yeah. And in the back of my mind, I think I've always told myself that I would write a story someday. But I didn't know where it was going to come from or what it was going to be about or have any indication. When I heard this man tell me just bits and pieces of the stories that he shared with Captain Daniels, I felt absolutely compelled to write his story. It was a means <clears throat> not only for him to release all of this information about the horrors of war and um, the relationships that take place with the men that are in service together and the bond, the true bond yeah. that develops between them. I felt absolutely compelled to tell the story. And, and you mentioned war, how they stay together, bond, because it brings them together. It, it is, and, and you can imagine then in the instance where they lose one of their own, how devastating it is, and yet they have to forge ahead, they have to carry yeah. on. It's not something they can put behind them in that moment. Um, they need to yeah. push it behind them, but I think it's one of the reasons he didn't speak of the war for so many years. Yes, war, yes. And that's, that's, uh, war is, is hard on people. Hard. Well then, obviously because this was a new um, endeavor for me, taking what I knew of Grandpa Duke, I sat down and, and wrote four to five pages of questions. On that first day? Yep. Oh, well, questions. Uh, well, when, when, uh. we, when I figured out that I wanted to write yeah. the story, oh, oh. that's... That's how I started, to get him to open up and talk. Now, now Doug, uh, you mentioned that when you were young, you saw a uh, Purple Heart uh, mm -hmm. medal up there. Uh, what have you done to promote the honoring of your grandfather's service during World War II? Because maybe no one knew what he did in World War II. Right. Um, what we learned uh, was that during this Christmas <coughs> of 2008, uh, he explained that the uh, once Captain Daniels uh, had uh, heard him tell another side of the story, which nobody knew about, which was the Battle of Okinawa. Yeah. Uh, he then went to the Illinois Marine Corps League, and uh, the uh, Commandant Gunnery Sergeant Mike Ruffner took the reins and was getting vital information. And this started in 2005. Oh. So this actually happened quite a few years earlier before we found this out. Oh. Oh, and I see. Yeah, oh. so this was all ongoing. 50 years, 45, to th well, you're talking about 50 years? Yeah. So uh, they're getting, it, they're looking for witnesses to write witness yeah. letters. They found, they were able to find one witness, an A company uh, in California, yeah. Marine L. Costello, wrote a wonderful witness letter. Yeah. So they're gathering all this information in hopes, which uh, my grandfather explained to us, that he may be reviewed for the award of the Congressional Medal of Honor, oh, the highest award? Which, which got our attention immediately. Oh. So once I heard this and Donna was compelled to get more information or maybe write a story, I wanted to get involved any way I could as yeah. well. And uh, by doing so, you know, my whole life I have uh, admired, respected, and loved my grandfather. He never swore. He never drank. He, he built his own home with his own two hands, with detailed craftsmanship, with solid wood staircases, a concrete uh, stairs going up to the front yeah. door. I'm just gorgeous. Everything he did was magnificent, and I, I admired him my whole life for that. And, and he for didn't swear? Never once. Not oh since he was five years old. <laughs> not <laughs> no, once. No, he no, never no. swore. Uh, and, and I, I wish a lot of people were was like Yeah, that. yeah. Um. So it's a real... Uh, uh, mentor for me as a grandson, you know, somebody to look up to, and I, I really appreciated that. And I, you know, and then hearing his quick story about World War II, uh, with uh, the Battle of Pelu and getting the Medal of uh, the Purple Heart, uh, was also you know uh, amazing to me. So you know, as I looked in his home, and I'd see you know pictures of his great grandfather, Chief Running Bull of the Yankton yeah. Sioux Tribe, you know, it, just a proud man and proud to be. Uh, a, a representative of such a, a tribe. That's, yes, that's in there. Yeah, that's, that's a picture from 1858. 1858. At the Chief White House. Running Bull. Chief Running Bull. Uh, and he, he, he was he what signed now? a peace treaty he, of the Yankton Sioux tribe. Yeah. Uh, and his father uh, was known, uh, his name was Zayesa, which means in English warrior, mm. who signed a peace treaty in 1837 
that ceded all the lands east of the Mississippi to the United States government. Oh my God. So the direct lineage is a wonderful, uh, just proud to be a part of everything. So as my grandfather explained, when the words Medal of Honor came out, yeah. that's when I knew after my, that this man is up for something that is really big and I want to know more and I wanted to help any way I could. So what I did was I got, I got his story and understood then he did not go home to the States after his injuries in Peleliu. He actually went to a hospital in Guadalcanal uh, and then uh, he, was, he, he uh, was able to go back to battle uh, in Okinawa. So now he's a squad leader. He's promoted a squad leader of the third squad and he's a corporal. Uh, so he has 12 Marines that he's in charge of. And uh, the, so he explains a little bit further about the date of May 5th, 1945. And there was a ridge that was, that held back the 27th Army Division for a month. A ridge, yes. Yes. And was, I was reading everything in the book. Ridge. Yes, yeah. and it was, it, was a, it was a fortress. Yeah. Uh, so the Army uh, then, uh, what happened was they called in the Marines to take this ridge. And uh, B Company and C Company tried to take it first of uh, the 1st Battalion, 1st Regiment, 1st Marine Division, but they were pushed back. Uh, then A Company was called in to take it. Uh, his squad's uh, orders were to take the six machine gun nests on top of the ridge, and the 1st and 2nd squads would go around the base, and then uh, once the way was cleared, then they would blow up the big gun that was in a cave. So right before the battle started the next morning, he heard a horrible scream and it was Corporal John Brady of the second squad burnt with a phosphorus grenade so he jumped immediately without even thinking, threw him over his shoulder, threw heavy fire, he brought him back to safety, went back to his squad, then the battle started, then as soon as they started up the ridge, uh, by the fourth machine gun nest, he heard a scream, Duke, I'm hit. He turned around, it was Rafaelito Cruz Altamarino, mm. who said, he goes, can you move? He said, yeah. He said, well, then get out of here. <laughs> so he then found that he was alone at this point. He lost all 12 Marines in his squad that were killed or wounded at this oh, point, yeah. went on to take the last two machine gun nests himself, stood alone on top of the ridge, while the other two squads went around the base and blew up the big gun. With doing this, what was really intriguing was that uh, the members of the first and second squad got they were awarded three navy crosses and two silver stars no mention of duke or the third squad was made in the in the uh, citations yeah. given um, so the uh, basically you know so that w we went from there to uh, get more uh, information as we could so we were able to get the one witness letter uh, from Marine El Costello, which was wonderful. Uh, and then, you know, the, he, my grandfather was 19 years old when all this happened. And at the time, most of his company was killed or wounded that day with taking this ridge. So to find more witnesses at this time of life was very difficult. Yeah. And unfortunately, we went through so many associations and, and organizations to do so, but uh, weren't uh, able to find any more witnesses. So uh, I believe too much time has passed. Uh, including Marine El Costello uh, also has passed as oh. well. So um, now what I've done then was I've reached out to uh, our country. You know, I found out with the, uh, in order uh, for the Department of Defense, you know, they follow the letter of the law with, with uh, any awards given for military. And the, uh, they do require two witness letters and a recommendation from an officer. So it's understandably, uh, uh, and understanding that, uh, had to go forward and found that the president, as commander in chief, is the according to U.S. code, can award a military award, uh, whether it be the Medal of Honor or any military yeah. award, uh, with the presidential review. So my quest turned into, well, how do I get the president's attention? Yeah. And I, I thought that's with the people, and with the people, I, I went through. Uh, the city, you know, city of Chicago, uh, the Cook and Lake Counties of Illinois, uh, all honored him with resolutions, uh, urging Congress to review his service. Uh, from there, it went to, uh, uh, as well as uh, congressmen writing congressional record statements. Fifteen governors across our country honored him with proclamations, citations, yeah, commendations. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's, it's been a, 
a labor of love. Yeah. Uh, and it's been a six-year campaign for this. And um, so basically now uh, with the uh, intention of uh, possibly a presidential review, um, we, we, we hope that happens one day. And, and we met you at a banquet. Uh huh. And you were, uh, I guess you were talking or Donna, you were, someone was talking up there. Yeah. You sat down next to it and my wife says, well, we'll put you on the TV show. That was wonderful. Yeah, so that's Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Donna, how long have you been devoting um, your time, effort well, to I'll tell the you, story? Um, it, after that Christmas in 2008, the following beginning of the year, Grandpa sent us a package of information. He had written down and, and he had pictures from the book, The Old Breed, where he was found a picture of himself yeah. after three days of constant battle where they all collapsed where they were when they were relieved by another squad, or another platoon at the time. And um, all of this information was a nice way to start but not having ever written a book, to yeah. sit down and consider um, how to write the book, I started from the questions that I had. I had asked him questions from his, the earliest years that he could remember through his life in Chicago where he lived before he became a Marine and um, moved here after as well. And um, with this information, I, I started to write and it was almost as if I could imagine myself walking through his life. Mm. It was uh, an incredible journey for me to be able to look at someone else's life and walk through it and try to write their story as best you can from their own perspective. I think it was, it's one of the most enlightening experiences I've had. Sure, because not only that you have to write the book, mm -hmm. you have to what, publish it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know. You oh, know, this has been a journey. Everything <laughs> is an obstacle. You gotta, you know, you gotta uh, ask the questions. You have to give you the, the answers to it. You have to write the book. You've got to do research. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you have to publish it. You got to market. So how, how did you publish the book? Well, I went to the Small Business Development Center in McHenry County, yeah. near where we live. And Christy Patterson, the director there, put me in touch with Michelle M. E. May, who is a writer herself of uh, Circle City Mystery Series books. Oh. And she's incredible. What a wonderful lady. She put me in touch with Brittany Corin from Written Dreams, who is an indie publishing editing yeah. service. She also provides services for um, pictures, for the graphic design, for the book cover itself. Um, and that's the book, Stand book, Like a Man. Stand Like a Man, the story, the story of, Duke, of Duke the Indian. The Indian. Yeah. And we have photos, uh, Duke was able to save many photos, but there are photos in the book as well. Oh. Um, not only in, on Pavuvu in the Russell Islands where he camped um, and they did maneuvers before they actually went to war in Peleliu, but um, when he came back after his injuries and um, it's just amazing when you consider what this man lived through and how we, the rest of us, need to honor our servicemen, these men who put their lives on the line for us and survive it. Oh, yeah, survive. Sure. You know, I, I just did a story about the Belgians mm -hmm. and look how they survived all the wars through history. Well, who fought in Belgium. And those, those people, that died, we honor. Yeah. Those that died, sure. we honor as the well. The Belgian people survived. And here, here, here uh, your, your uh, grandfather. My husband's right. grandfather. And your, gran your grandfather-in-law, your grandfather. Yeah. And how they survived in, in, in World War II. And how he survived the memories of it as yeah. well. Yeah. Because they didn't know what post-traumatic stress disorder was. So, <laughs> so did they critique your book also? I mean, the, the published book, you got to... Uh, s pick out a title, how to format the pictures. Uh, uh, did they critique your book also? Absolutely. Um, Brittany was the editor. Oh, okay. And I worked with her very closely yeah. um, as to the content of the book and did end up with uh, a major change in the end where I was almost going to have a part one, part two. Yeah. 
And we decided to do it all from the perspective of Grandpa Duke, which was um, in keeping with um, the flow of the book, to have from beginning to end, from his life as a six-year-old boy yeah. growing up in South Dakota, sleeping on a goatskin rug at yeah. the foot of his grandfather's bed, <laughs> um, to becoming a very successful man working at a bank in, in Fox Lake, um, foreman of the bank and, and many of the projects that they took on and, and the building of it, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. And um, Now, now th 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 did that person live here, the editor? Is she from Illinois also? Uh, Brittany's actually from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Also, you use a lot of the internet, a lot of computers, uh, emails, back and forth. Very much, very much a part of the game. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And mm -hmm. Research uh, the same thing. The internet is an amazing yes. source of information. Now, do you think you'll ever make this an e-book? You know, I, I, I'm, I haven't. Would this be also an e-book, also an electronic book? Oh, it is. It, oh, it this, is. Oh. The book is available in Kindle, um, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Oh. I know. As I, both I, an uh, e-book. Uh, you sent me the book. I read the book. Excellent book. I, I will recommend every, everyone out there go out and buy. Stand like a man. <laughs> the story of Duke, <laughs> the, story the, of Duke Indian. the Indian. I mean, if, if you're a Marine or in the Navy or in the Army, very interesting book. Or even if you weren't in, this is a very interesting book about uh, a person who, as you mentioned, lived on the reservation, went to war, went to Fox Lake, here, and um, and how he uh, how his life uh, uh, how how he ran his life. Absolutely. Didn't swear. Okay. No swear. <laughs> no, swear. no swear. No <laughs> swearing. Mm -hmm. That's what his grandpa used to say. No <laughs> swear. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, did did you learn anything in in the process of writing the book? Uh, what did you learn? I learned more than I ever could have fathomed. Not only about the process of writing yeah. a book, and getting in touch with the people who can help you to finish, to complete yeah. the book. Um, but the research in learning about um, Chicago, the times, the clothing they wore, yeah. um, the way they packaged meat, whether or not they used tape or tied <laughs> it with string, yeah. the, the smallest details uh -huh. um, I paid attention to yes. in, in photographs that I would view, in stories that I would read, um, newspaper clippings. Because this helps you in writing <coughs> a story, detail. Oh, describing it, it gives you the background yeah. Yeah. to create the scene in your mind. And then, as I said, it's almost as though you're walking through it. You're present in that moment when you're writing the scene. It's, um, it's what I love about writing. And so uh, what did you enjoy most about writing this story? Any favorites? Um, well, the battle scenes were, were extremely interesting yeah. because it was something I hadn't been exposed to. Yeah. And I think anyone who reads the book who hasn't been exposed to these battles, it is gives you a great insight. But also, the particulars such as the Pullman train, that Grandpa, Pullman Duke, train? Grandpa Duke took a Pullman sure. train to Camp Elliott in California. It happened here in Chicago, put the Pullman That's on right. the south side. And, and the luxury of this train, the poshness <laughs> of the, from the velvet covered yeah. seats to the um, white tablecloths on the tables, um, and D just the braised beef that, with yeah. roasted right. potatoes that they <laughs> served for meals. Yeah. It was incredible. And I, I looked into all of that. I read the menus oh, that the I menus found. Still, yeah. I read menus from the poem. And, and, you know, and that's why it's important if, if you have a family, uh, maybe you don't think uh, what you have for uh, your grand, grand, great kids. Save it, But they save it because your great, great, great grandson or daughter would like this if they're writing a book and learn more about the, your family. Absolutely. All these little tidbits of yeah. information can be drawn together yeah, yeah. And, and used to tell a story. You tell, yeah, 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 right. Now, uh, are you planning to write any more books about, maybe you'll write a book about uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> well, about his, uh, the political <laughs> work. <laughs> <laughs> the process in, it, in <laughs> itself is, is so, it is taxing. I mean, yeah. it is wearing because I'm, my husband had heard so many no's before he heard the first yes. Yeah. And I think uh, sales background probably sure. helped in that field. Well, th that's good. If, you, <coughs> if you've got a lot of no's, you keep on asking yep. because one yes will take care of a hundred no's. That's right. Exactly. And so, and so never be afraid. And you say ask and ask and uh, 
Well, if you keep, and, and, and it's a lot like Grandpa Duke did in his life, if you keep that goal in focus, yeah. you have an end goal. In order to reach that goal, you do whatever you need to do to get there. Now, now Sherry showed the, th uh, the first image of uh, running. Uh, running pole, chief now, running pole. Now, is there an another image that she has to show? Oh, Grandpa Duke. Uh, Grandpa she, okay. she, I think she had that one up there already. Had, uh, let's okay. show Gra Grandpa Duke again. Um, he was in Springfield. Springfield? Oh, that's Springfield, And you yeah. see him standing in front yeah. of the oh. uh, Lincoln statue. If oh. I may, that's uh, Absolutely. Illinois General Assembly uh, honored him last year. Oh. Uh, and the Veterans Affairs Committee was so moved by his story they all asked to co-sponsor the resolution uh, with State Representative Barbara Wheeler, who's his state representative, uh, and, and urging Congress and the President to review his service in hopes that he may receive the Medal of Honor, and uh, which was a wonderful honor. And that picture was him standing in, the, uh, in front of the State Capitol of Illinois with the statue of uh, President Abraham Lincoln. Oh, thanks. So what other books are, are you going to write now? Well, I've given it a lot of thought, yeah. and I would actually like to write children's books. Children's books. When my sons were small, I used to uh, create stories for them. Oh. Um, they were <laughs> adventurers, <laughs> yeah. brothers yeah. in arms, and um, I have always wanted to write children's books, and I've, I've got so many stories in my head, not only from stories that I've told, but things that I think would be beneficial for children to know, and it's the perspective that you learn when you when you are an author. Um, the reader appreciates the perspective, right. and if you can do that for children, it's an amazing thing for them to love to read. Now, Doug, about what has this affected your life about hearing about your grandfather? Oh, it's been an amazing ride. Uh, just, I am honored, blessed, and fortunate to have such not only a wonderful grandfather, but but to be able to tell his story and hopefully uh, help him have closure with, with, with what he's earned and deserves and, and what my beliefs are and so many others. Uh, I've met so many wonderful people through this process in the last six years, you know, talking to all these congressional offices and, and state representatives and, and staff members that were so patient and listening to my story and what my plea was. And, you know, I just, if there's a way to say thank you to everybody, I, I, there's an unending thank you to, to everyone that's helped. And, and as the wheels of justice move slowly, I do pray one day that the President of the United States of America will review his service and my grandfather may be recognized.